<laughs> it's a guy who claims that you can learn a whole lot from football, and he says the game teaches you about life, love, even parenting. And this will be hard for many Packer fans to hear. Lots of you out here don't want to hear this, but he also says the best football team in the history of the NFL was the 85 Bears. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bears. How about that? Rich Cohen grew up on the north shore of Chicago. Of he course. Says, <laughs> yeah, he grew up in Chicago. Surprise there, right? He says he died with the Cubs and then was reborn with the Bears. <laughs> he wrote this book. It is called Monsters, the 1985 Chicago Bears and the Wild Heart of Football. So exciting. I'm excited to have you here. I'm so like thrilled. Thank you. Thank you. Dr did you drive up from Chicago this morning? Yes. Okay, so you actually graduated from high school the same year I did, 1986. Yes. So when we were seniors in high school, the most exciting <laughs> thing in the history of the universe happened to us. Right. I always say I didn't have like Paris in the 20s. I didn't have VE Day. I didn't kiss a girl in Times Square when the war ended, but I did have 1986 January. <laughs> Love it. You were at the Super Bowl. <laughs> yup, I got on a, f I got randomly got tickets and got on a plane full of drunken super fans, <laughs> half of whom were arrested when we landed. Really? And I always said, I'm going to bear witness for these super fans because they couldn't go to the game. They were in jail. Uh -oh. So me writing this book is fulfilling a promise to the drunken arrested super fans. Okay, before we get into your book, I got to know, are you only agreeing that the Bears in 85 were the best team because you grew up in Chicago, because you were at the Super Bowl? It's a good question. Is that the only reason you truly think that? Are you biased? Yes, absolutely. I'm 100% biased. How could, <laughs> how, could you. I, how could I not be? I mean, this book is of like kind of like the of a fan and being a fan and having yeah. a team. I mean, I, I don't think that they weren't the best offense in history, but I do think that defense for one season was the best defense in history. And if you, they went through the playoffs without giving up a point. Yeah. Two, two words for that defense. Buddy Ryan. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and they had Seriously. games to go, oh, the Bears got only 150 yards on offense. What did the Giants get? Oh, minus 16. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so I got to go through a couple <laughs> pictures because one of the, mm -hmm. the most fascinating stories to me from this team was Jim McMahon, not just then, but now, and also his relationship with Mike Ditka. Okay, the punky QB. Your <laughs> thoughts really quick on Jim McMahon. Jim McMahon was like Steve McQueen was suddenly the quarterback in the Bears. I mean, the Bears always had boring quarterbacks. Suddenly this guy shows up. Look at him. He'd been kicked out of, he'd been kicked out of, that's like you need a dress code, guys. Yeah, yeah. He'd been, exactly. He'd been kicked out of BYU for violating the Mormon code. He showed up at Hallis Hall with his case of beer, and he said, all right, I'm ready to take over the team. They had, the, they had him run a mile, like, for the press, the first-round draft pick. He puked halfway through and couldn't finish. Through a mile or one mile? Yeah. <laughs> that's not Because he, like, good. rolled in at four in the morning. You know, so suddenly he was... And he was, and he, and Mike Ditka was an incredibly tough coach on quarterbacks. You look at the quarterbacks he sort of destroyed by screaming at them on the sidelines for messing up. And McMahon could win with the Bears because he would basically just give Ditka the finger, walk away, go out, change the play, and score. Ditka would kick over cooler, but the Bears would win the game. I, I know it was it was unbelievable. The one thing that, uh, on a sad note, related to that, is that McMahon has kind of become the poster boy for head trauma now. And mm -hmm. and one of the things, if you watch the um, '85 Bears, is well, and even before Jim McMahon man not only hit hard but he liked to take hard hits and the the unfortunate thing about that is that that it has lifelong consequences for yeah. people like him who really got hit in the head right. hard a lot yeah well importantly he was here he went won the super bowl with the packers as a packer wearing mm -hmm. number nine he um Ditka said that he played quarterback like a linebacker. He would initiate hits. If he, one of the most exciting things in 85 is he would run downfield and headbutt all the linemen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> after scoring a touchdown, until they told him he couldn't do it anymore because he was hurting his back. So he's paying the price for it now. I mean, but it was his being sort of a daredevil that gave that team its zip. Mm -hmm. But I hung out with him a lot uh, for this book, and he was great to hang out with, and he was great on those old stories. Well, I love the fact. So, yeah, you, you caught up with all these guys. You, you did interviews. I was wondering, did, did they feel like they were um, the best when they won? Or did they sometimes feel like they were even a better team when they lost? Or, or where did, how did they feel about that win-lose dichotomy, you know, the two – well, bipolar. They, I mean, the big question in Chicago is why that team never repeated. You yeah, know, mm -hmm. a lot of them think they were the best as a defensive team in '84. Yeah. But in '84, the most horrific football injury I've ever seen, McMahon, in what was called the most violent game ever played against the Raiders, lacerated his kidney. Mm. 
and miss the rest of the season. And they had no quarterback. And without McMahon, they couldn't score. So the defense was great, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, but they couldn't score. One of the, one of the things that, that also happened to the Bears, and there, there, you know, some sad, sad notes along the way, is that um, when they were supposed to get their White House visit, they throw this huge ticker tape mm -hmm. parade in Chicago, and then they're supposed to go and see Ronald Reagan was president then. Um, and he was going to meet the fridge for the first time, but then the Challenger um, exploded, and I think seven crew members died, and they never got their White House visit until President Obama, who's a, you know from Chicago, they, they made a call and said, hey, can we come visit? Um, which is wonderful that eventually they got to make that trip, but it was a, minus a lot of famous faces from yeah, the Yeah, well, Walter Payton died, Dave Dewerson died, Fridge didn't come, Dan Hampton didn't go. I, I got to go to that and hang out at that mm -hmm. and watch that. And one of those guys told me that in the White House during the tour, McMahon had one of the Secret Service guys handcuff him. He said, <laughs> so they'll think it's like old times. That is hilarious. <laughs> I, I know I'm not letting Tiff ask any questions. I'm so no, sorry. But I just two really quick things because we ran out of time. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> Tiffy. Okay, I'll sit over here. Uh, sorry. No, no, no. Stay, stay, stay. <laughs> um, Dave Dewerson um, died of suicide. I think it was 2011. Um, he, he shot himself in, in the chest and said, I want you to save my brain for the NFL. Again, getting back to the, the, the right. head injury thing. Um, but one of the things that I think is cool about the White House visit and your interviews with these players is like Buddy Ryan, I think, was like 25 or something when the Bears won the Super Bowl. So when he, by the time he gets to the White House, he's 50. How about these guys? Where are they now? Just really quickly looking back on, to, to have been part of that team right. and look back on it now. Well, it's like one of those, I thought you could write this book when you realize that for these guys, this was the biggest thing that happened in their life, and it happened when they were 27. So what do you do for the rest of your life? Yeah. You know, how do you live in, and it's, I always After think. the dream. Yeah, yeah, and I think a lot of them, it's, they're almost the equivalent of, of guys go, who go in space and then have to come, they see this earth from the outside, and they have to come back in and just be walking on the ground. And a lot of those astronauts have problems. They have this radical change in perspective. And some of the players were incredibly great at doing that. There was a great player who actually named Doug Plank, who was yeah. a safety. He wasn't on that team, but he gave the defense its name, the 46. And while the Bears are going to the Super Bowl with the defense he had always been the center of, he was working in a Burger King in Ohio. Mm. And he said, if you ever want to not feel sorry for yourself, work in a Burger King. Mm. You <laughs> yeah. know, you won't have any time but to be working in a Burger King. But they've all, you know, McMahon, when he was 26, said his dream when he retired was to do nothing but play golf. And that's basically, you know, what he what does. What he's been doing. And Gary Fensick's incredibly successful businessman. Dan Hampton's on the radio, you know. And they've lived, and Mike Richardson ended up in prison for a while. He was on the team. Mike Singletary is a coach. Leslie Frazier's a head coach. You know, Ron yep. Rivera's a head coach. Singletary still got those eyes, too. Mm -hmm. I got to wrap you up because yeah. we have a satellite. Um, but Jim McMahon's wife, um, or girlfriend, takes a picture with him very often because she hopes that he'll always remember her and she's afraid he's going to wake up one day and, mm. and not not remember him or not recognize him. It was such a pleasure yeah. to, to have you here. here. An incredible book. Um, people can meet you tonight right here in Milwaukee because you have a um, reading, a discussion, and a signing for Monsters. It's happening tonight at 7 o'clock at Boswell Book Company on Downer, but I got to see you first. Yeah. And just so. so you know, if you want to feel good about yourself, watch Springer. Okay. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so awesome to meet you. Thank Thanks you so much. Here.